Hey, 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 this is Sandra coming to you direct from Hayward, California, the heart of the San Francisco Bay Area, where I was born and raised. Who I am in a nutshell. I am a first generation Chicana in the U.S., also the first in my family to go to college. My parents are immigrants from Mexico. I have a bachelor's degree in Chicano studies from UC Berkeley and my master's degree in counseling from Cal State Hayward. I have been a California Community College counselor for the past 20 years. I provide academic, career, and personal counseling in one-on-one -on -one sessions, as well as in college success courses. In these brown bag podcasts, my intention is to share my experiences working with my community and my college students. You will meet some of my mentors and awesome colleagues who have motivated me to continue doing the work that I do. Hello, my name is Monique Williams. I am currently an English instructor at Chabot College. I work with the Emoja program. I am the tri-chair of the Student Access, Success, and Equity Committee, and I am a member of the CCEPG. I was born and raised in Hayward, California, and I am a proud Chabot College graduate. I earned a BA from Mills and an MA from San Francisco State, but I never left Chabot. It's my home and I have been a part of the institution in many different ways. I've been a student, an administrator, and now I'm a teacher. I've had the privilege of seeing the college through three different lenses. I joined the Brown Bag podcast because of the two women I get to be in conversation with, Sandra and Carmen. These women, with a lot of care, teach me more about how to best serve the Chabot College community. I hope listening to this podcast will give you the same opportunity for growth that each conversation with these women gives to me. So welcome everybody to the Brown Bag Podcast. Today we are lucky enough to have two great guests, but we are without Carmen. Um, so you won't be hearing Carmen this time, even though you'll be hearing about something that she is like the, the leader of, and which is party. Um, party is an offering that's been kind of instituted, I believe, in the past two years. Is that right? So in the past two years, there has been a party practical anti-racist teaching institute that has been offered to, to help new people coming here to Chabot to kind of get an idea of practices that they can help make a more equitable institute for all of us. And so with us is Alice Hale and Mark Anderson. If you guys would like to introduce yourself and say hello. Hi, I'm Mark Anderson, English faculty here at Chabot. And I'm Alice Hale. I'm a faculty in early childhood development at Chabot. Thank you. Um, I've also been a part of a party. I was for a little while, and what I did experience was pretty amazing. But before we get into it, we want to start with our little like warm up for us. And that's what is like giving you life right now. So we ask everybody what's giving you life, and we haven't heard Sandra's voice yet. So I know, I know. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, and what's giving you life? I am turning back to my doll collection and so I am a Barbie and doll mostly Barbies but Barbie and doll collector I've signed up to participate in a couple of doll expos and uh, I was really trying to to get rid of my collection and so the hopes is to go and sell my collection um, and share what I have I think it's always exciting if you're a collector to to share what you have and then I start I end up getting attached and then I go out everywhere I go now I'm like looking for dolls and looking at dolls and I've always uh you know everybody for gifts I've had many people give me dolls or Barbie so that's that's what's giving me excitement and life right now <laughs> Alice my husband and I have been watching this show that we've been sort of binging called Shetland and it's a murder mystery show that takes place on the Shetland Island in uh, Scotland, which is like in the North Atlantic. And it's a really specific kind of place. 
and they have really strong Scottish accents and every once in a while these Scots words show up and it's just very interesting kind of show and the characters are really appealing and so we've been kind of binging that and it's been fun and a, and a peek at a part of the world that I'm not that familiar with so Mark I have a guitar and I, I like to fool around with it a little bit and I think this past month I've been taking it out more often than not and just like strumming finger picking some things I uh sometimes all it inspires me to write my own little lyrics or parts of songs and sometimes I'll I'll try to learn somebody else's song I I learned a a boy genius song called strong enough a couple weeks ago and then I found out they won a Grammy for that song so that was that was cool and I tried to I have three kids so I try to make it so that they get involved with the playing more than more than dad will you keep the guitar down <laughs> it could go either way when I get my guitar out how fun hopefully they'll get inspired to pick up the guitar or another instrument as well you know, fun, it's funny is that there's recording on my computer, like a garage band thing. And so if I do it into that and say, let's do something together, they get excited about it because then they can hear it back or add, make the instruments sound funny or, you know, make a, make my acoustic guitar sound like an electric guitar, or things like that. So there That's are ways cool. to draw them in. Monique. So all of those things, I have so many comments on all of those things. <laughs> So Sandra, the doll, fascinating. <laughs> and I have so many, and it immediately made me remember that I used to have the pregnant Barbie. <laughs> and I didn't like, I like, it was the only one I liked because she had brown hair. Do you remember she had brown hair? Like, and I was like, oh, I hope you find a pregnant Barbie. I don't have her anywhere. <laughs> I hope you find a pregnant Barbie. I love that one. <laughs> and then I was thinking that there's this, because you talked about the show and I had seen an advertisement for it and I wanted to watch it. And then the other day I was looking at Instagram and they were showing this little kid and they're like, why you want a Scottish kid? And it was just this little kid kind of telling off her parents. It was so cute. It was like just the little, like the little words of the language. It was just the cutest thing ever. So like, yeah. So those things, are, and then the music. So my, what's giving me life is connected, directly connected to yours, Mark, just because of the kid involvement. But my son, every day when I've been picking him up, He's wanted us to like make up a dance when I see him. So like he'll run out of the school and he'll go, mom, and he runs to me and then he makes up a dance and I'm supposed to do the dance back. And so every day we've kind of been like doing these little dance sessions with each other, which is really cute. So and it's just fun. So that's giving me life right now. Yay. <laughs> well, I'm really excited to to have this conversation with Alice and Mark on party it was interesting when Carmen came out and said, hey, let's have a party. Come join the party. And I was like, what? Let's, what is this about? And um, to find out it's a practical anti-racist teaching institute that's being offered to our Shabo faculty, to all new incoming faculty and to existing longtime faculty who want to ramp up and get with the times in their lessons and their teachings. And so, Alice, do you want to go ahead and, and start off as to uh, what is party or what has party meant to you and uh, why did you get involved? Sure. Well, party, we met, I think, twice a month. And we would have these great discussions. Often there were readings that sort of prompted our discussions about applying a lot of these ideas that we've all had uh, and we've heard about, about, you know, opening up the curriculum, getting sort of a more culturally appropriate ways of teaching. And I got involved because I had heard a lot about equity and um, making our programs more, you know, uh, equitable and and helping more of our students be successful and the ways that that they were sort of you know being impacted by the way we were teaching and I was really eager to get some practical applicable ideas about it I mean I knew I knew the why I needed to know how the what the what and how 
And so this was a really good opportunity to do that. I have, uh, in early childhood, we have a very diverse student body. A lot of them are non-traditional college students. A lot of them are coming from other cultures. A lot of them have themselves had bad experiences in school. And so I wanted some ideas. And they're also teaching children like themselves. And they're one of the reasons they're doing it is because they want the children's experience in school to be better than theirs was. So this is a chance for me to sort of transmit these ideas to sort of a, you know, a couple generations. And a lot of it was very aligned with what we do in early childhood anyway. So it was, I found it all, you know, it all made a lot, a lot of sense to me. So I uh, started teaching at Chabot as a part-time faculty 10 years ago. And I think my second year here, I participated in a, a workshop that amongst other people, um, Carmen and Kristen uh, had been cooking up. And so I have been fortunate to go to a lot of the sessions that they've sponsored in the, you know, over much of my time here. And so when I saw that they were doing something that, well, I guess what I would say is that sometimes if I go to a session that's rich with tons of great ideas and really makes me think about teaching, but it's like a long one day session at the beginning of a semester, I get so inspired. And then when I think about it, you know, a month or two later, I say, oh, shoot, there are all these ideas I meant to implement. And so I I was really excited when I saw that they were um, doing something that would be throughout the whole course of two semesters and um, that we would be checking in with each other about the teaching in real time as the semesters were going on. That was really inspiring to me. And I also know for me personally to get busy in the middle of the semester I get siloed and get focused on grading and meeting students and uh, maybe tasks with committees and not as much time to interact with colleagues around hearing what they're doing in their classrooms and getting good ideas about what they're doing and having that time to see, okay, what's happened to the plans I had at the beginning of the semester? Where do I need to adjust? What students am I concerned with? So for all of that reason, I just thought that that, that idea of having it extended over um, over two semesters sounded like a great format, and it really was. Just a little follow-up on that. What I hear from you, Alice, is that you're taking what you learned in party and actually um, also giving that to your students who are teaching as well. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, yeah. I mean, and and a lot of it is, as I said, it's a lot of the concepts are really kind of embedded in what we do already, but it kind of reaffirmed it to me. You know, I think I remember one point in the session saying we were talking about uh, what we do in class. And I said, here I am lecturing my students on how children create their own knowledge. <laughs> and so, you know, it was like a reminder that if I'm imparting this to, to my students for their students, I need to do it that way with them. And it really kind of held my feet to the fire on that. It's like you can't just fall back on a PowerPoint and a lecture all the time. That's so beautiful. And it's also like it's so amazing how things can ripple that way. The other thing that I wanted to ask about is so, Mark, you were talking about this kind of crosstalk and the ability to kind of like look at lessons or how people are using things. Uh, but what's interesting about party is that we are actually not all like if you're in party, you're not in the same division or or discipline, right? And so it's cross campus, it's all different departments and stuff. How how was that good for you, both of you? Like how did it feel to like share these ideas, but also share how they work and hear how they work in other areas. I thought it was great. I mean, you know, I got, I, I, I remember having long conversation with Amanda, who teaches ESL, and seeing what Shannon Lee did about, like, the, the fact that, you know, identifying the names of the constellations is really culturally dependent. And it really makes you think, wow, how can I apply that kind of thinking to what, to what I'm doing? And and also we had uh, someone, Eugenie, who was a librarian. And seeing those ideas on a sort of service basis and not just a teaching basis, 
I think is something that the whole college could really benefit from. Yeah, shout out other people in the room. Uh, Philip is a uh, communications professor and he would talk about what was happening in his classrooms, things that students were saying and, and moves, he lessons he, he was introducing to them uh, that would draw them out. And I would feel like I was a student in his classroom and his creativity and his, he um, in particular has a history with spoken word and loves to use hip hop lyrics in his classes. And so the way that he was using the things he was passionate about and bringing them in very intentional ways to elicit critical thinking from his student is completely relevant. And I agree with Shannon and also uh, Gargi was a, a microbiology teacher and her enthusiasm and positivity for it made me very interested in her content where I would never, I do like, I, I do think about astronomy and I like to learn about that, but I never thought, oh, I want to know more about microbiology and, and getting to talk to her and see her passion for it. Just in that is a great reminder too, that um, part of what culturally relevant teaching is about is to share your passion for your topic and to invite your students in and, and get excited about something that they didn't even know that they would get excited about. And how beautiful, like, I, I and I agree, Mark, with, you know, how we end up getting so busy during the middle of the semester. We often just fall back to what's comfortable, right? And what's easier sometimes. And sometimes that lecture and that PowerPoint is what it is, right? And so being able to to get examples of how uh, to model that in our classroom, you know, and uh, and revamp our classroom that it doesn't have to, it 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 can be a PowerPoint, but let's be active about it, right? And getting ideas on how it doesn't have to be that can be that can be easy too. Right, being active and and getting into groups and um, you know having a different participation way of participation um, can get to be an easy exercise as well, and not mm -hmm. have have it be thing. And especially if we start practicing it every semester or in more classes, right? Then it's then it's a practice that uh, becomes our pedagogy and our way of of teaching and working with students. So I think one thing to kind of like, to kind of give people incentive on what kind of joining party might offer, maybe you can tell us about some of the things that you really came away with, the things that you really feel like you learned that have added value for you. So things that just stuck. A lot of the discussion about culturally appropriate ways of sort of constructing a class in in order to give people lots of opportunities to to sit with an idea to to discuss it to chew it over i was looking at this chat and chew remember mark we talked about that and 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 then a chance for them to give you know feed it back somehow to a small group and you know a lot of it was stuff that i kind of always sort of instinctively did, but I always kind of wondered if it was really good teaching. So this was very affirming in a lot of ways. And also realizing that it's okay to sort of choose your battles about, you know, there, there are times when it's okay to not focus so much on like a, the perfectly written paper. Um, and instead think about what are they talking about? Go, you know, talk about the ideas and that, and that there are other times when it is appropriate to do that. And I think the other thing was seeing those people from the sciences in it and seeing their kind of aha moments, um, made you realize this is really cross-disciplinary and that there are ways of, um, and because I think we tend to think, you know, well, they're facts that, you know, facts are facts and, and but there are it's a it's a matter of perspective a lot. And I think just being comfortable enough to open up to different perspectives can be really powerful. Um, later on, I will I'll probably talk a little bit more about uh, the central book that we 
read, but it was Zaretta Hammond's culturally responsive teaching and the brain. To reiterate what Alice was saying, there were some practices, you know, that I was familiar with, but it's really neat to look at how some of these practices, how, how at least Hammond connects them to brain science and to to also get at the um, anti-racist, the practical anti-racist part of the title is that there's a lot of ways that students are showing up in our classes and have have learned to get through classes by kind of turning off a part of themselves for many different reasons. And I think part of that is, you know, the racism that's that's constructed our, you know, education culture. And so the practical aspect then is in your classroom, you have the power to make different moves, invite students to open up aspects of their brain that may be the, the go-to or the PowerPoint and lecture strategy towards class um, don't, don't open up. And so uh, one of the things that pushes me beyond com comfort zone is uh, Carmen's got a whole slew of games that she plays with her students. And I, I've tried some with, with uh, my students and it pushes me outside my comfort zone. But every time she leads an activity, and I'm like bumping an elbow with somebody or I'm making a silly gesture. So I, you know, I find myself laughing and kind of letting my own guard down in a way. It's a good reminder that, that things like that can help uh, students take their own guard down, you know, that, that a lot of students have gotten feedback and have a, had experiences in writing classrooms, kind of being told, or getting messages that the writing's not good or something like that. So they understandably have a guard up when they come into a writing classroom. So, you know, any any moves that you can make um, to to help that 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 guard part, that guard dog part of the brain relax, and to actually be able to engage with the material um, is is good. So I, I learned. I think a lot about that and kind of a bigger theoretical understanding of why why that works and why that's a good thing uh, to happen. And I would say another practice that was really helpful was um, surrounding um, focal students. And it was the invitation to find a, a student in your class that um, that that might be early on in the class that you you want to pay attention to for whatever reason. And you might look at your own classroom data or might look at your department's classroom data or equity data about uh, pass rates for um, you know African American male students or you know some some demographic that you're saying, hey, our our school and maybe even my own teaching history has not been doing you know justice or educating properly. So the focal student um, protocol is an activity to think of one student and take notes and keep track of your interactions in class or the emails that you sent um, and take note of that student's responses to that and um, to really take some of the big data that, that we know and that reflects that uh, we're underserving stu students certain students as an institution, uh, but to use this very, again, coming back to that, that practical, the PN party, that practical way of, um, you know, saying that there's, there's moves you can make, you can pay attention to how students respond to those. And so that was really good and accountability, again, of having somebody at party that you could sit down and say, oh, well, you know, since we talked about such and such a student, they missed two classes and I had to, I was really worried and I sent this email. So that was a pretty, that was a, a good, a, another good thing that I learned that um, I've been trying to to keep up with. I think so much of what both of you are saying are some of the things that, like when I hear instructors say that they want to participate in something, but for whatever reason, they constantly don't, right? There's like, I, I want to do this thing on equity, and then they, they don't show up. A lot of times, 
it seems that there's like almost like a fear of like this these spaces being uh critical or like uh demonizing anything that you've done in the past and i just i think like especially in this my experience of the group it's absolutely not that right a lot of it is actually really affirming and validating right because you know like many people aren't doing horrible horrible things right so a lot of it is affirming and also does validate and which helps you know how what to that there's something already that you have right, that you've already built, that you can kind of pour more of yourself into, you know, like, rather than kind of thinking that, oh, I just have none of this, and I, you know, like, and I have gonna have to start from square one, and they're gonna say, get rid of everything, or something like that. So it's, like, really, in that way, um, empowering, right, because now, now you know where you're going to go, and you know, you know, you have these things, and then on top of that, you get actual tools. So that's the other thing that I always hear people say, like, it's cool to talk about the theory and cool to talk about the concept, but how do I actually do this? Right. And people are like, how do I actually, and in party you get like Mm -hmm. actual things, (laughs) you know, like you, this is what you do. This is how you, this is the game. This is the thing. This is that, right. This is how you structure the lesson. This is, you know, like, so just, I'm, I just like, I hope that people hear that like, this really is not, you know, like a space to say, like, you've been doing this all wrong for so long. You know, it's really a space to say, like, look at what you have, you know, like, just look at what you have, celebrate that, and learn some more. And there's a lot of beauty in that. And I think that if we could get people to understand that, there maybe would be more participation. Yeah, I mean, I think you're right. You know, you get sort of set in your ways teaching a class, right? You kind of got your you got your syllabus, you got the things you do, you know, your readings are, and the thought that you're going to have to th- throw it all out is really not pleasant. But I know, like I, as I said earlier, I after that, I think it was the summer of 2020, which was just hellish summer. I think that was the, you know, the pandemic and the and the uh, protests and the fires and everything. And I was constantly going to these sessions about the ideas and the concepts and the theories. And I was like, well, okay, but how? What do I do? How do we? What do we do? And I remember being in one session, somebody said, well, you could Google that. And I thought, no, that is not the answer. <laughs> Don't send me off to Google thing. And so, yeah, it was really nice to have, the book was really helpful to, and as Mark said, ties it to the brain science, bouncing ideas off of people. You see what you already have. You, you know, it, it's like um, when I learned the high flex training from Wendy and um, online teaching, she said, you know, you work smarter, not harder. And it's a similar thing, I think, in party. You, you look at what you're already doing and you think, well, what can I do with that? And just and, and alter it and change it. So, yeah, I would really encourage people to give it give it a, you know, give it a try. You might find you actually might find things get easier because we all want our students to succeed. And I think we can all end up kind of banging our head against the wall trying to figure it out. And this can really give you some ideas about that. And it's not to say that like that like there aren't moments in which you are humbled or where you yeah. are kind of like, ooh, I, did, I was doing that. You know, like that there aren't moments that are like that. But the space that's created is safe and also that you're not the only person right you know like it's like everybody's gonna have one of those moments and you're having it together and so like it's you know like it it really does feel good you know like it really does feel good so much of it especially when we do just the concept talking right um, so much of it can kind of sometimes just feel bad and especially bad when you don't know where to move. Like when you've recognized something in yourself or in your teaching or in your practices, you don't know what to do about it. Then it feels extra bad because now you're aware and also don't know what to yeah. do. <laughs> you know? yeah. The one thing that I saw on the website when I looked up the party and what it's offerings, it seems like there's also Canvas support. And so you have, you know, you are in a community in Canvas with resources. 
right? And samples and examples. And so we have many uh people from across the state that listen to our podcast. And so they can always go to the chapeaucollege.edu website and just do a search of P-A-R-T-I party. It'll come up like an outline and they can always contact Carmen Johnson or Kristen Land, right? And be able to, to get a training out at their campus so that they can train the trainers to start institutes up like this across the state. Because we know that our demographics here at Chabot are not unique. Uh, our our demographics of uh, our our students, you know, across the state of California, are all in need of feeling welcome, feeling safe, having feeling a sense of getting a sense of belonging in the classroom. And so, when a an instructor is willing to step out of the comfort zone themselves it allows a student to also step out of their comfort zone. Um, and so I think that's one of the exciting things that I see party doing. It's it's this momentum that is starting um, across campus and having more and more students saying, oh, I like that class. Oh, I feel comfortable. Oh, I can't miss class, right? And, and when our students start feeling that, they want to pass their classes. They have good things to say about the classes. They have good things to say about Chabot. And knowing that there's people that care, you know, following up with an email when they were out of class ha- makes students not want to miss anymore, right? And want to participate and want to make sure that they're learning as well when they see the teacher enthusiastic to teach, right? Enthusiastic to to learn along with the students. And so I'm super proud of Chabot being able to offer this to our faculty and staff on campus as an ongoing opportunity to keep talking about how to help our students succeed, right? To help us as instructors succeed in the classroom. Sandra, I wanted to take that point about the the commitment um, of Chabot as an institution and mention something that, that, you know, Alice and I did mention that it is a stipended position or a stipended program for participants. And and I say that in particular as an opportunity for uh, part-time faculty. I know that it's on a specific date on campus, so it doesn't work for everybody. But I know that when I participated in the FIG 10 years ago as part-time faculty, just having that that agreement that my time was going to be paid for. And your time is valuable. Yeah, the <laughs> time is valuable and be paid for. Um, I think that's that's good. So if, if you're listening in part-time faculty and you're thinking about if you're going to be teaching on campus on Wednesdays, it, it tends to be offered Wednesday afternoon. So if you're thinking forward to next year, um, it's a great opportunity to make connections on campus as well as professional development. And and there really aren't that many professional development opportunities for teaching for faculty. Mm-hmm. You know, this is one of the best, I think. I mean, there's, you know, really for a lot of people teaching at community college, you sort of get hired and thrown into it. And like, this is syllabus and this is what needs to be on it and have fun. Here's a key to the room. <laughs> <laughs> and here's how to turn on the projector. You know, um, what? you must have been at my hiring. But I'm jealous you got a key. <laughs> <laughs> Well, is there anything that you have um, seen yourself like use in the classroom that you would like to really recommend? Like you're like, there's one thing I think that everybody should actually try. And maybe that's a that's a way of like kind of imparting some that some knowledge on other people, especially when they want tangible. A lot of people want tangible things. I think one thing one thing that we did, and I've done this in other workshops, and I do think it's really good, is taking a look at your syllabus and trying to tone down the really directive, really punitive language in it, realizing that it's your first impression to students and just looking at it and seeing how can I 
and I don't want to see being insincere or anything like that, but just how how would this hit if you were a student? And does it need to hit that way? And I mean, there's some things, you know, that you really want to be definitely clear about and stuff. But, you know, look at it like you're an engaging it, you're engaging in a partnership with these students around this class. And so how would you talk to somebody who's a partner in this rather than setting out a bunch of rules and things that they have to do? And I think that that is a good way to sort of start off. And it's also an easy way to sort of start off. You know, because we were in party for a two hour period after a day of teaching and and there were a lot of activities where we got to stand up and move around. And it was a great reminder of um, part of the reason I like teaching is I don't have to sit at a desk all day. So it was a good reminder that that's good for students. And one in particular that's very easy to adapt to anything I teach is four corners where you put a statement up and, and students move to whether they strongly agree, agree, strongly disagree disagree and and then in your corners you discuss it and then it gives the opportunity for students to share out with the whole group and then I had done similar activities before and uh, uh, Carmen and Kristen would then uh, project a slide with a with a statement from a text that we've been reading as well that kind of went along thematically with it and I thought that added some rigor to it so I, I immediately stole that and used that in the fall. And then I forget the context, but I had a um, several athletes from a team, um, from the same team in one of my spring classes. And I was talking to one of the guys just about a lot of things after class and including a little bit about how COVID affected his, his era of students in terms of engagement, in terms of having been used to being on class and Zoom and not, whatnot. And he said, he said, remember that activity we did in the fall? That, that was great. We, we should do that again in this class. That was so, you know, everybody, and I think he was kind of maybe throwing some of his teammates under the bus in terms of their level engagement. <laughs> he was just saying, you know, I noticed when you did that, then everybody had to get up. Everybody had to move and, and do something and participate. So there's all sorts of activities to get students up and move, but it, and it seems sometimes when you're lesson planning, like, oh, this is going to take 15 minutes and do I have time for that? But it, I think it, I think students notice and enjoy it. It's crazy. I never thought about the fact that like, I don't ever have to sit down in my classroom unless I want to. And that is part of the reason why I teach. Cause I couldn't like, I can't not fidget, you know, like, so to have me like sit there is just like torture, but yeah, I have them sit there for so long. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've never even thought about the fact that I'm totally comfortable and they're just like dying in the desk. <laughs> and you know, Mark, what you just said about the time from the from this class, just, I, I think that's something I took away is that, uh, you know, I always had that we always we talked about how we always have all this information we need to get out. But what are they getting from the interaction and the chance to really sit with ideas and talk about them? That's probably more valuable than just getting out those, those extra three slides, you know, those additional, they can get that information from the text or in Canvas. And I think that's something that I really learned. It's like, I don't need to finish the PowerPoint. If they're having a really great discussion, if the ideas are really good, if they have a lot of questions, sit with that, you know. Yeah, yeah, there's a balance there, right? That ends up happening that or shifting in in realizing if a student isn't listening or participating, like what is going to help them participate and be engaged, an engaged listener, right? And so if we're if we're having them move around and we're having them be active in the classroom, that's that may be more meaningful in a more meaningful way that then they're going to be more attentive to want to listen and more eager to listen. Uh, wow. And I know one thing that I know in my Buente training is learning our students' names is just so important. And I don't teach as many classes as you all do, but but definitely under, you know, knowing who they are and recognizing them, letting them know that you see them. That you you know you may not know exactly who they are, but you know who they are. That they are one of your students is super important in in feeling the students get be participants in your class. 
Yeah. And that idea of like knowing who they are. I mean, I think Hammond talks about this when they're talking about culturally responsive teaching. Right. And that's a lot of party is looking at Hammond and how that um, how that should be used in the classroom, thinking about that. When you if you don't know your students, if you don't know their names, you don't know where they're from, you don't know who they are. Right. You can actually be building things that you think are awesome but are actually really kind of not going to get your students to respond or be involved because it is culturally hard, right? Cult, like, And I think of really great examples are given in the text, you know, about the teacher constructing an assignment and the assignment, you know, like basically is asking a student to abandon parts of their culture to be able to do it, right? Um, and those and making those considerations when you're actually creating things and being aware of that takes getting to know your students, but also getting to know that our name, our our minds will actually default to who we've kind of been taught to structure classrooms for, right? Or who we've had classrooms in when our classic room experience, who classrooms have been structured for um, instead of who's right in front of you. Right. And so kind of just having I think part of what you take away from a party is like being able to have like a really reflective space about your students um, and about what you're creating and how it responds to the students in your actual room rather than just like, is this good? Is this not good? It's the in and, and giving space for that, you know, like is, is a value I come away with from that, from all the things that Carmen and Kristen do, but from party um, especially. And also just, I think it's been the most helpful, I think, as far as teaching, right? As far as kind of like, just when I sit down to create something, that those voices are now in my head, along with what I've been taught my whole life, right? So they're kind of talking to each other now. Well, I think it's time for us to share any articles or sources or that that it will, I think we did that, but any exit ticket and recommendations? Um, what what do you have uh, in recommendations to move forward um, and to live uh, a full life, um, to live a happy life? Monique, you want to start? Oh, <laughs> damn. So, if, <laughs> how do you live a happy and full life? If I had that answer, answered some that. I know, right? <laughs> Recommendations. I know Mark said, okay, let's, you know, you wanted to go a little bit more, share more about a resource or a, an article. So I think I'm, I'm going to recommend, because I've been staring at you this whole time on this Zoom, that everybody get this lipstick that you're wearing because it is like the best <laughs> shade. <laughs> so I'm going to recommend that we all need this shade. Yeah, so I don't even know what it is, but <laughs> what is it? Who's it I don't by? know. It's everything's wore off. Yeah. Oh, no. I have That's no idea. Messed up. There's no little sticker or anything. <laughs> no little sticker or anything. Mm -mm. You're trying to you're trying to make sure we can't replicate the look. Huh? Top secret, trademark. <laughs> top secret. So my recommendation is to go to Sandra's office and steal from me that look. <laughs> yes yes <laughs> but no really I think your recommendation is treat yourself you know like treat yourself to something that makes you feel good um that makes something makes you feel lovely and and lipsticks do make me feel yes. uh <laughs> awake and alive yeah. um there was there was one class of Puente students when I told them when you don't see me wearing lipstick like there's something going on and I was like diligent in like every time, you know, making sure I'd go to class with some lipstick on. And one time I did it. And Miss Hanera, do you need a hug? Is everything okay? Oh. And I was like, yeah, everything's fine. Why? You know, and well, you're not wearing any lipstick today. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad you're paying attention, but I'll take a hug if you want to give me one. <laughs> right. And so um, it was nice, you know, like, Sharing with students some of your, you know, our person, personal items, you know, it's is always fun. And so I didn't realize how much just sharing that, like our lipstick or our makeup or 
eyelashes. This is something new for me too, is that when connecting with students in that way can help in the classroom as well. Yeah. <laughs> Make you so human, right? Mm-hmm. Most mm-hmm. definitely. Any other recommendations, advice? Well, I'll keep with my TV show theme. This is what I'm telling everybody. But TV shows to watch, I'm telling everybody to watch the tel- this series called Reservation Dogs. Oh, I love them. You love, I love that show. Oh. <laughs> and the best thing about it, the reason I tell particularly people at community colleges about it, because there's this episode in the last season that's really beautiful where one of the characters is sort of forced into a relationship with her father who she doesn't know because she needs him to fill out the FAFSA. Yeah. Which is yeah. hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but it's about these kids on a on the reservation in Oklahoma. And it is one of the most wonderful TV shows. It's heartbreaking. It will absolutely break your heart. Mm-hmm. But it is amazing. And not enough people know about it, I think. It is uh, uh, probably like the best show. Just yeah. so well done. So just beautiful. so, so well done. And I, I agree. I never even thought of, we should just have everybody watch the FASFA one. <laughs> yes, because yes, there's a scene with a counselor that's just hilarious. <laughs> Great. <laughs> what platform? What, where do you stream that? Uh, I think it's on Hulu. Recommendation for the, the book. I would just, I can put in the, when this publishes on youtube i could go put in the comments the the link to zaretta hammond's book and there may be lots of comment copies circulating around um shabo so ask somebody before you purchase it yeah yeah um, and I I yeah and recommendations this is not a recommendation really because i think it could sound like a um a cliche old man on the porch take but last thursday i dropped my phone and it broke and so I've been without a phone for a really long time. But <laughs> my daughter was telling somebody on Sunday about it, or we were telling somebody about it, and they're like, oh, no, that stinks. I'm so sorry. And my daughter's like, yeah, he kind of likes it. Like, yeah. <laughs> Any good. plans on when you plan on getting a new phone? I, I have it. I have it. And it was sent, and they sent a um, SIM card that was the wrong size, too big. So I have to, like, go to a... Verizon store try to get that. Have you noticed a difference in in your in your life this week without a phone? Yeah, I have noticed a difference. Um yeah, the the instinct to like look in my pocket where I just think, oh I gotta check the time or is there a text or oh I have to listen to like put on music or put on a podcast or something like that to to fill the air. So yeah, and I def- definitely miss music and podcasts like at the at the beck and call for sure um i do notice that like hand going to the pocket <laughs> a lot to, <laughs> it like, like the, oh so yeah but anyways a fun little um not fun little experience because the the process of getting a new one's annoying but you know something something that made me think this past week about and, life. but i think that's also so important for us as we're working with students how hard it is for us to put our phone away as as faculty or teachers or adults and then expecting our students to put it away as well. And so getting that sense, you know, if if we if we're asking that of our students, can we do that ourselves? Right. Um, cool. <laughs> um, then you still haven't given a recommendation. Me? Yeah. You commented, but no recommendation. Oh. <laughs> I was in Las Vegas this weekend. <laughs> oh, for what? What did you During do? During the Super Bowl. <laughs> I didn't go to the Super Bowl, but I would totally recommend <laughs> if you're a sports nut to uh, or enjoy sports, to go watch a sporting event um, with other like-minded people in Vegas they have they Vegas has really uh learned to tailor big events for like-minded people and so there was all kinds of watch parties and fan experiences 
like that weekend of the Super Bowl. And that's, and we're 49er fans. And so it was exciting to be there during that time. But I've also been there during just a regular Super Bowl about 10 years ago. And it was fun to see how many people represent their, you know, and are so passionate about their teams. And I think past my past recommendations have been like, go watch a sports game with your family right it's fun but my this recommendation is go to vegas and do that splurge on yourself and have a nice dinner at it and beverage so <laughs> that would be my recommendation so the, the highlight is go to vegas <laughs> <laughs> yes that's a good one did you see that sphere thing that everybody's talking about now yes um it was actually right out out of my bedroom window, um, we were able to have a direct view of the sphere, the backside of it as anyways. And so it was really cool. It's way bigger than I expected it to be. And mm. So that was really exciting. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for talking to us today. We really appreciate it and appreciate you sharing all your knowledge. Like you said, if there's anything that you think about afterwards, that you wanted to add, we can add that to like description or if there's recommendations or links that you want to add, you can send it over to any of us, Carmen, Sandra, or I. Any questions or anything for us? No. 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 I put the link to the um, books website in the chat. It's, okay. That could go in the description. It'll be helpful. You guys are really good. I, I sure. you know, like I, I responded to Carmen, yes, because yeah, I like saying yes to Carmen, but then I'm like, <laughs> oh, I don't know if I'm going to be <laughs> So you guys did a great job. I yeah, almost this forgot fun. I was. Um, I, might, I, I might try to send you a link to some the, uh, some cards I found that I, I used as an icebreaker. So I'll look that up and send it to you. Okay, great. I went ahead and put it in our notes here that is shared in our, in our team's folder. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Guys. Have a good Bye. long weekend. Bye. 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 Bye.